one of the projects that's been dear to me now, we've been working on for a couple of years, as a way to mark collectively the first African Americans in North Carolina who rose to the bench. We have a wonderful exhibit here. We spent two years meticulously researching and collecting articles and artifacts and photographs uh, and raising the funds necessary to put together an astounding exhibit about the uh, first African Americans who broke every uh, glass ceiling in the North Carolina judiciary. I mean, I think it's very important that we celebrate the folks who were first in these areas. But having said that, I, I long for a world, and I think most of us do, where uh, we don't celebrate first anymore. Uh, we celebrate that the most accomplished, the most learned, the most ethical person got a position independent of their race or their sex or their sexual origin or their politics or their religion. Will we get there? I hope so. We spent a lot of time inside this building thinking about how we can. But that is not the society in which the people we honor today walked, far from it. So it's appropriate we give them their due. And I want to give the podium now to some of the folks featured today, representatives of the state trial bench and the state and federal appellate benches. Judge Joe Webster is the biographer of Judge Sammy Chess, who's also with us today. And we'll talk a bit about <laughs> Judge Chess and introduce him. He'll be followed without further introduction by Justice Timmons Goodson and Judge Duncan, after which I'll return with some logistical information. Thank you for being here. Good evening. The dean has instructed me that I have four minutes. <laughs> Apparently, he's not known many uh, federal judges slash preachers. <laughs> but in any event, uh, he's just introduced uh, the Honorable Sammy Chess, and I want to use my four minutes to read some excerpts from a book that I wrote that was published uh, two years ago this month. And it, I'll first say that it was a treasure. It was just a, a, just a, a joy to get to know him better, although I'd known him for 30 years, but not like spending so much time with him in writing this book. Um, and so let me first, I know there are a number of students here, and so from page 122 of this book, I want to read uh, something that is especially uh, pertinent to our students. It says, today, Chess is saddened by what he sees in many of the young lawyers who have graduated from our law schools. He has observed that far too many of them choose a lawyer with a fancy big car as an example of success. Not enough emphasis is placed on the importance of a good name. Quote, a good name is very important, says Chess. Chess's advice to young, young lawyers and those who aspire to become lawyers is that, quote, young lawyers should reach their heart or search their hearts and ask why they want to become lawyers. First and foremost, they should know that the law is a profession. It is not a traditional business. Unlike most who engage in a traditional business, lawyers take a solemn oath of office. They bear allegiance to the Constitution and the laws of the United States. Judge Chess compares the roles of lawyers in policing the legal profession to that of soldiers who enforce the rule of law in society. This is a sobering thought. Judge Chess's reflection reflection on the role of lawyers should cause all lawyers to reflect on their role, not only as a means to a livelihood, but just as important, the lawyer's role in helping to maintain an orderly and just society. And then from page um, 66, um, one of the things that I certainly learned about Judge Chess, that he has a just tremendous moral authority and an abiding faith. And I quote him, he says, you must have a bearing and an abiding faith in your moral direction, that you can't be a lawyer if you don't stand up straight. There will be blows against you, but you will be a man if you take the blows. A man can do remarkable things if you inspire others. You can even disarm your opponent if you stand up straight and practice these principles. You can't think about consequences, but you have to think about 
what the Constitution requires. And the third one is, um, I had wondered throughout my this long process of writing this book about um, Judge Chess, by the way, will be um, 85 years old, I think, on March the 28th, um, next month. And uh, he grew up in South Carolina, and he was, uh, saw just a lot of in, injustice, uh, by the way, which caused he and his family to migrate north to New York. So I'd wondered how it was that he was able to set aside whatever biases that he might have as a result of things that might have happened to him early in life and even on the bench. He said, uh, without hesitation, quote, you treat people the way you want to be treated, not the way you are treated. I didn't let them set my standards, he said. If a Klan member can bring you to his level, then you are not well rooted. Unquestionably, Chess's legacy would include the fact that he sought to be fair and impartial to every person who appeared before him as a judge. Um, I could probably read on here, and, but I, I probably my four uh, minutes are up. But um, this, even though I wrote the book, I, there's just so much wisdom in it, so much wisdom, and I and that's the reason I've chosen to just take a few minutes to say what um, Judge Chess has said in this book. Thank you. I want to uh, begin by thanking uh, Dean Leonard and uh, Campbell uh, Law School Alumni Association and um, North State Bank for conceiving of and funding this wonderful uh, project. One of my favorite um, individuals is James Baldwin. Uh, he has said many wonderful things. Uh, I want, if I can find it, to commend uh, something that he said to you. Uh, something that he said, I want to commend it to you. It seems appropriate at this particular time. He says, history is longer, larger, more various, more beautiful, and more terrible than anything anyone has ever said about it. Well, I think the same can be said about North Carolina history. The exhibit that uh, we're soon going to uh, view highlights an aspect of North Carolina's history that maybe um, is not or has not been known uh, by very many people up to this point. Interestingly enough, um, a number of the individuals that will be uh, revealed in this exhibit um, I, I knew. You know, growing up I had a lot models. My early role models were my parents and my grandparents. I was blessed in that regard. Often you have individuals need to look outside uh, of their family or their immediate surroundings to find someone to emulate um, and model themselves after. I did not have to do that. Uh, my father, Sergeant Edward Timmons uh, and Beulah Timmons were always wonderful models. I, interestingly enough, uh, a number of the individuals that we're going to be seeing uh, in this exhibit uh, also were role models for me. Um, I knew Judge Elrita Alexander. Um, I met her, interestingly enough, at, a, at, at UNC Chapel Hill while a student uh, in a class that Dr. Um, Brandis had. And uh, she had come to teach the class. And I just could not believe that I was meeting um, a black judge. And I, I know she must have thought there was something wrong with me because, you know, I, I, I was just looking um, 
at her, but I remember thinking, I'm serious, I remember thinking, she's incredible. She's so gracious, and she's here taking her time after working all day uh, to come to Chapel Hill and to teach a class. And um, I said, I want to be like that when I grow up. And um, I, I hope that I have in some measure come uh, close to that. Judge Sammy Chess. Um, met him when I was in law school. Why? Because he came to UNC Chapel Hill to speak to the um, black law students there. He shared um, about his life experience and um, just seeing that man told me that, you know, hey, maybe we can do some of this great stuff that he's doing. So um, again, thank you, uh, Judge Chess, and of course, uh, Ju Chief Justice Henry Fry, who swore me in as a district court judge and swore me into the Court of Appeals. Why do I tell you all of this? Uh, because there's a thread that runs. We're all connected. And um, I'm just so, so blessed and fortunate uh, to have been influenced and to have had my life touched uh, by those individuals that came before me. If there was ever any doubt that I stood on the shoulders of others, um, that, that it wasn't there very long. I knew it because I knew those individuals. I knew what they had achieved. And I have always felt very strongly that I was able to achieve because of what they did. Thank you all for coming out. And I'm just as excited as you are about seeing this wonderful exhibit. Uh, no, I have not written a book on Judge L. Rita Alexander, but I did do a law review article. <laughs> I have read that article. It was wonderful. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm extremely pleased to be here. Thank you very much, Dean Leonard, for inviting me to be with you this afternoon. It is an honor for me to share this podium with two of my favorite people, um, Judge Justice Patricia Timmons Goodson and Judge Joe Webster. However, I lay claim to Sammy Chess <laughs> that goes way back beyond any claim to Sammy Chess that you can make. Because I knew him when my mother called him Messy Chess <laughs> at North Carolina Central University School of Law. So, I love you, Judge Chess, <laughs> and I look back at you and what the law students at North Carolina Central did in a time when they couldn't go to the other law schools in the state, and I am humbled and proud. So, thank you. I appreciate the fact that Campbell has been willing to host these exhibits, first looking at first women of the North Carolina judiciary and now African Americans in the judiciary. It is, those are tales that need to be told. I would like to take a moment to just tell you about a friend of mine, Paula Giddings, who wrote an exceptional book published, first published in 1984 and since updated, called When and Where I Enter. It's the history of black women in the United States and the, their impact on race and sex in America. And after she published it, she was approached and asked, why did you feel it was necessary to write that book? And she quoted Toni Morrison and said, if you don't know my history, you don't know yours. Thank you, Dean Leonard, for making it possible for all of us to learn our history, which is also yours. I am honored to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Judge Webster, Justice Timmons Goodson, Judge Duncan, for those uh, Terrific remarks. And now to the event at hand. Um, as soon as we recess, the exhibit will now be on display. It's in the first corridor 
takes the entire corridor after you come past the security desk. There is a lovely reception uh, in the Pope foyer, and I hope you will uh, enjoy that with us. Uh, feel free uh, to go up the library steps up off the Pope foyer and see the Chief Justice Marshall exhibit at the top of the stairs. His rocker is usually hands-off, except on special days, and this is one. Uh, so today we've removed the roping, and feel free to uh, sit in the rocker, soak up some wisdom, and even have your picture taken if, uh, if you like. Um, and uh, join us in our other uh, 1040 events for the next year. 2019 is a big year at Campbell. It's the 10th anniversary of our move to Raleigh. It's the 40th anniversary of our first graduating class, and we intend to celebrate it on a monthly basis, and I hope you will uh, enjoy it with us. So uh, thank you for coming, and now to the party. <laughs>